Hi and welcome to a quick review. Today we're going to talk about displays and their calibration. So first of all, if you Mac user and you PC user, you will be in a completely different situation. So for Mac users, everything is already done by Apple. So if you use Mac computers with a Mac displays, every display will have a color profile associated to that display. And that allows the monitor to display correct colors. And for Macintosh, you need to worry about the display calibration only in case you're using a PC monitor with a Mac computer. So in that case, you do need to have a hardware calibration done for that display and the color profile fed to the Mac OS. So the colors on that display would be viewed correctly. So if you PC users, the situation is completely different. So for a PC user, you need to calibrate everything because none of the manufacturers are actually providing color profiles for their computers correctly. To do that calibration process, you need to have a hardware calibration device and a software which comes with it or some third party software. And again, even Dell, for their mobile workstations with a high quality displays like RGB LED wide gamma displays, they do not provide color profiles. For example, M6400 and M6500 notebooks, which have an option of RGB LED uh, wide gamma displays on them, will come with no color profiles. So all colors displayed on those will be completely off. And that is really a pity. But again, if you don't really want to have any trouble with it, just go with a Mac devices because Mac monitors are maybe not the best overall, but they are good enough for 99.9% .9 of the cases. So working with photos, working with video and everything else. And only in case you need super, super high quality for some reason, then you can go, of course, with some high-end neck products, very expensive neck monitors, and then just use that uh, calibration, hardware calibration to uh, uh, create a correct color profile for that monitor for the Mac. Okay, so regarding the monitor selection, so if you buy a laptop or you want to buy external monitor for your computer, it doesn't matter, you need to know some basics about the displays. Talking about notebooks and their displays, where you have not too much choice actually. Most of the notebooks will come with a TN technology displays, which are very quick, but they have a narrow viewing angle comparing to high quality displays, like for example with uh, IPS panels. But uh, only a long time ago, uh, IBM used to make like T60 a laptop with uh, IPS panels on it, very expensive ones, but we do not make it anymore. I'm not aware of any manufacturer for notebooks who would actually use IPS panels in their notebooks just because of price. Now, choosing a display, you still have some freedom there. So you can choose a backlight, RGB, LED, white LED, or CCFL backlight. So for notebooks, I would recommend to go with a white LED and sRGB uh, gamut uh, screens. Uh, and it will be easier to calibrate later and also provide you with quite standard color representation, which in 99.9% .9 of the cases will satisfy you and whatever you do editing pictures, printing pictures, and so on and so forth. And also another important parameter is uh, color depth of a monitor, because even though a video card can display 8 bits per color, and that per video card sends that information to a display controller, so that display controller may not use all of it actually to, to create a colors on the screen. So some of, uh, like most of the laptops actually, we do have 6 bit per pixel color depth, real color depth, and then some technology like FRC for example, to substitute colors in a different frames so the human eye would interpolate them in something in the middle. And that provides not very accurate color representation. Okay, so let's talk about external displays. So for external displays, you need to go for IPS technology panels all the time. So this is a currently the most advanced technology allowing for widest viewing angles and also very good color representation. Regarding the backlight, again, if you want to calibrate the monitor, you may have troubles with uh, white LED or RGB LED backlights. So I would recommend to try CCFL first if that satisfies your need in terms of a color representation with your calibration device because you eventually may actually get the best result with just this configuration. So uh, RGB LED will not be calibrated as well with the currently available calibration devices as the CCFL backlight displays. Now the gamut of a monitor. Of course, there are wide gamut monitors available which are close in their color representation to Adobe RGB or sometimes close to uh, NTSC color gamut. Maybe it's all good, but in real life you don't really need anything higher than a sRGB so standard gamut monitor because most of uh, monitors are actually still in that color space. 
So pictures when built for web and the color profile removed from them and also on uncalibrated displays will look actually better if they were built originally on standard gamut display input delay. So it is important to understand what where is the time spent between the video card actually outputting the signal to the monitor and the monitor electronics processing it and then displaying it on the LCD panel. So that time it's an input lag. So the input lag, if it's less than 20 milliseconds, usually it's fine. Uh, if it's more than 20, it may be noticeable. Uh, but how you can test it, if you have a laptop and you can connect a laptop to a monitor you're trying to buy, you can actually move a window so it will be half visible on your laptop screen and half visible on that external screen and try to move it up and down and then see if, if there is a noticeable delay on the screen which you're trying to buy. If that is happening, it's probably the input lag is too high and then you just need to consider some different monitor model instead of this one. So the last parameter is the color depth, of course very important parameter. So for external display it may go from 6 bit to 8 bit to 10 bit to 12 and even to 14 based on the monitor type and how expensive it is, how good it is. So you need to avoid anything below 8 bit per uh, color. Basically even if we have FRC or A FRC technology still avoid it because you won't get a true 16 million colors displayed on that screen. So for true 16 million colors you need to have 8 bits or more. Now let's talk about the calibration devices. So let's start with Spider 3. This is the first calibration device I bought myself. This is a Spider 3 Elite. And it can do a very good job with standard gamut CCFL backlight displays, IPS displays. No problem at all. Calibrates very well and they look good. But it cannot calibrate my M6400 with a wide gamut RGB LED backlight display at all. Everything will look very greenish on it after calibration. So basically this device cannot understand the full gamut, even with the latest software update from Spider. Now the second device I have, and that Spider 3, it's a colorimeter. So another colorimeter I have is this one. It's a X-Rite i1 Display 2 and this is a very good device. It can do a very good job on all type of monitors I tried it with, including my M6400 RGB LED uh, backlight wide gamut display. No problems at all. It just does a good job and calibrates it very well. Definitely recommend it. Another one I have is this spectrometer. This is a Color Monkey spectrometer. The good thing about spectrometers, they can actually calibrate your printers as well. So we do have this ability with a color picker to choose the right colors printed out on the printer and then compare them to the standard and then create a color profile for your printer. We also can calibrate monitors, but what I noticed that actually calibration with spectrometer is worse than calibration with a good colorimeter. So my i1 Display 2 does much better job on calibrating my Dell wide gamut display than this one. So this one, after calibration with a color monkey, the profile it creates is unusable, basically. You cannot use it for any photo editing or anything like that, because the colors will be way off. So again, the winner is this one. X-Rite i1 Display 2. I would definitely recommend this one for you. So that's it for today. I hope it was useful and see you next time. Bye.